Okay, good morning, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. As we go to the, uh, the chitas of the day, we're going to start with the chumash of the day. We're holding in the portion of uh, Miketz, chapter 41, verse number 53. In the uh, seven years of plenty that were in the land of Egypt were finished, and it started, Sheva Arav, the seven years of famine started. Love to come, Kasher Oma as Yesila said, there was a famine in the land. But in the land of Egypt, there was food, because Yesila Tzadik, Yesila made sure that there was food in the land. Verse 55, when the entire land of Egypt hungered and the, the people came to cry to Pharaoh for food. So Pharaoh said to the Egyptians, what are you coming to me? Go to Yosef. Whatever he tells you, you should do. Shirashi says, what happened for the grain which they had stored had decayed. So what happened was that all the food that they uh, they uh, they had that they put aside all started to decay, and now only the storehouses of Yosef had food. So he said, Pharaoh said to them, "Whatever Yosef tells you, you shall do." Why? What does that mean? Since since Joseph ordered them to circumcise himself, Joseph said, "You want to have food? You have to circumcise yourself." So they came to Pharaoh and they said to him, this is what he said to us to do, but to circumcise himself to get food. So Pharaoh said to them, why did you get, why didn't you gather grain? Didn't he announce that the years of famine are coming? So why didn't you have any grain? They replied, we gathered it much, but it rotten. So Pharaoh replied, if so, do whatever he tells you. He issued a decree on the grain and it rotted. If he issues the decree on us, we'll die. So we better listen to Joseph. Rashi doesn't give the reason why Joseph told the Egyptians to circumcise himself, but the measure says, it's put on other commentaries, that Joseph wanted that when his, he knew his brother was going to come down to Egypt, and therefore he told his, told his brothers, he told the Egyptians that they should circumcise themselves so that the Jews and the Egyptians, the Jews wouldn't feel uncomfortable in Egypt. And that's why he told all the Egyptians to circumcise themselves. And the famine was on the land. And Yosef opened up all the storehouses. And he gave food for the land of Egypt. But the famine intensified in the land of Egypt. So that she says, but you can, I'll play, what means the play audits? What's the face of the land? Who are the face of the land? Those that are rich. They started to, when the rich started to feel the pain, then things had to happen. It's called Shalahem, the Tigum Renzi, which, which they, there was gain, grain. Now she continues, the word Shevar is sometimes an expression of selling and sometimes an expression of buying. Here it's used an expression of selling. And he sold the Yishba, they started to get a lot of money, Egypt, because all the people from around the, all the, whole, all the lands, all the countries around Egypt needed to come and get food. That they, they became the biggest exporter of foods. And therefore, they needed to bring money, Shevet. And Egypt became extremely, extremely wealthy. Verse 57, because the whole land, all the, the whole lands, all the world came to Mitzrayim. Lishber al Yosef, they came to get food from Yosef. Because the, 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 the famine was strong in the land. Now she says to Joseph to purchase, but it's interpreted as verse according to the sequence, it should have written to purchase from Joseph. <laughs> Yeah, Yaakov, verse chapter 42, verse number one. And Yaakov saw that there was food in Mitzrayim. Yaakov said to his son, 
Why Titro? Why are you satiated? So now she says, from where did he see it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What he, what, he looked on the, he looked on the WhatsApp. Uh, he was looked on Facebook. What did he mean? He saw. What did he see? He had a. From where did he see it? It is not true that he did. It, it is not true that he did not see it. Only that he heard it. And behold, I heard. It says in the next verse, it says, I heard. And over here in this verse, it says, I see. What is the meaning that he saw? He saw in the divine mirror that there's shever, that there's hope. Shever also means hope. That there's hope in Egypt. But it was not a real prophecy, explicit informant that it was Joseph. He said, yes, shever, Messiah, I feel there's some kind of something good in the land of Egypt. Lamatito, why do you show yourself before the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Asa that you are satiated? You look like you're, you're like hungry, not hungry, because they weren't hungry. They had food. But at that time, they still had grain. But everybody saw that the Jewish people, that the, that the sons of Yaakov, his family, had food. They had no food and they had food. So it appears to me, but uh, in yeah, and it appears to me that it should be explained according to the simple man, Lamateroy, why should everyone stare at you and wonder at you that you are not seeking food for yourself before what you have in your hands is depleted? From others, I heard that Titro is an expression of emaciation. Why should you become emaciated because of the famine? So the word titro. What is the meaning? So one hand, it can mean why you're satiated, why you're looking like you're happy. And the other meaning is why you why you why are you becoming hungry? Why wait till we starve? Let us go and get food. He said, he said to them, I heard that there's food in Egypt. The do shama, go down there, go down there, buy some food, grain. Benichia will live, the lay number, so we won't die. So now she said, He told him, Go down. Why didn't he tell them, Go, Lechu? What's the do? But the do, the word the do equals up to 210. Now starts the 210 years that the Jews are going to be in the land of Egypt. So he told them to do. We need to start to 210 years. And Kiminya uh, to do. So that's why he told, he's over here, he prophesied that now it's going to start because that's going to happen. They're going to go down to Egypt and ultimately in the year, they're going to come down all to the land of Egypt. And the 10 sons of Yaakov, 10 brothers went down. The brothers of Yaakov. Yosef went down, 10, Lishbar Bar Bersayim, to buy grain in Egypt. Now she says over here, but the scripture does not write the sons of Jacob. Why to the brothers of Joseph? You should have said the 10 sons of Jacob. This teaches us that they regretted selling him and decided to behave towards him brotherly. They find him. They also went down. One of the reasons was they went down to find him. They wanted to see if he was in Egypt. And they would ransom him for whatever amount of money we demanded from them. So they decided they were going to go down to Egypt and find their brother Yosef. That would be one of their missions. Asara, why is it written? It's not written, but Joseph's brothers, Benjamin, Jacob, did not sense so he can figure it out. <coughs> why do we need to write Asara? But this was the meaning. Concerning brotherhood, they were divided into 10. For neither the love they had for him nor the hate they had from was equal. So there was 10, there was 10 brothers. Hence the attitude of brother, they were divided into 10. As concerned of buying grain, they were all in one accord, in one heart. So each one, every person is different and therefore they hated him different and they loved him different. But Joseph's brother Benjamin and Yaakov did not send. Esachav with his brothers, ki ama pen yikra ikrena asan, because he said, least the misfortune will happen. So Rashi and Kizena asan at home could be could not misfortune befall him. What do you mean? Only on only on the way. 
Lezim and Yaakov Seth, from here we learn the Satan accuser, a person at time of danger. And that's why we say Tfilas HaDerech, because when there's a time when, when you're on the way, you always is a time of danger. So you're flying 37,000 feet in the air, you say Tfilas HaDerech, because that's, a, that's, a, that's almost like a miracle, and anything can happen, and therefore you're driving, you're, you're, you're driving on, a long, on a longer road, and out of the out of the state out of the city, you also say tefillah said that, so so that you should be protected. And he felt that that the Benjamin would would be in a dangerous situation. Now you should just realize that Benjamin at this time, I like the picture show it as a little kid. He was Kanayin Ahara married with ten children, so he was not the young boy. Yosef was was uh, was uh, I think Yosef was seven years older than him, so uh, Yosef was thirty, so he was twenty three years old. And the, and, the, and the sons of Israel came to purchase among those who came. Because the famine also was in the land of Canaan. So the whole Canaan was coming to Mitzrayim. Why did the Torah tell us they came in the midst of those that were coming? They hid themselves in the crowd. So they did not be recognized. Because their father had commanded them not to all appear in one entrance. For each one entered through another entrance, so that the evil eye would not have power of them. For all of them were handsome and strong. So if you can imagine, ten, 10 of them would come together, 10 big, they were tall people, and they were strong, and they were handsome guys, and they were an evil eye. So he said, listen, you go with 10. Ultimately, this is what Yasef used against them, that they came to spy in the land. Why'd you come in 10 different entrances? And Yeshiv was the ruler of the land. He was the one who sold the grain to the entire populace. And the brothers of Yeshiv came and he, they bowed down to Mapayim Aitza, the faces to the ground. Here was the, was, the, was the dream. The dream was coming true. They were bowing down before him. The prostrate himself. On their faces. So there's a right, Yishtachavah means spreading out hands and feet. And Achnu Kaidim is when you bow down, you don't, you don't fall on your face. Yishtachavah is when you lay down on the floor. That's Yishtachavah. So that's like, that's real. So the Besamitosh, there was Anach, that's what you say, Anachnu Kaidim, or Meshtachavim. It's two different word, words. Anachnu Kaidim, we bow we beg, we bow, we bow down. Mashtachavim, we lay down. So that's a two different expressions. So over here, it's not that they bow their head. That's the kaidim. You bow your head. Mishtachavim is you lay down on the floor. Pishut yadayim raglayim. That's the concept of laying on the floor, spreading, and that's what they did. Face on the ground. That was Mishtachavo. Ayah Yosef es echov. And Yosef saw his brothers. by Yakedem, and he recognized them. He's not going to lay but he decided to make himself a stranger. He spoke to him harshly. He asked him, why are you coming here? We came from the land of Canaan to find, to purchase food. Now she says he behaved towards him like a stranger, verbally by speaking harshly. And Yasef recognized his brothers but they did not recognize him. So that's the Yaki Yisrael should nichem chas v'azakim, because when he left them, he was seventeen years old, and he didn't have a beard, and now he had a beard. Behem leikiru, because they left him, he was not full bearded, and now they found himself full bearded. I got the message that Yisrael recognized his brothers when they were delivered into his hands. He recognized that they were his brothers, and he had a compassion upon them. Right, they, he, even though he could have dealt very harshly, as he said, started to deal harshly, but he couldn't do that because he loved his brothers. But they did not recognize him when they fell into his, when he fell into their hands. And they did not show you and they wanted to kill him. And Yesu remembered the dreams, which he dreamt for them. This is a long time ago, this is 20 years ago. 
22 years, there's a 20 years difference. He told him, you are spies. Lira says, Everest, Artis, you didn't come here for food. You came to spy in the land of Egypt. So now she says, he remembered the dreams to them, about them. He knew that they, his dreams had been fulfilled. They bowed down for him. Everest, Artis, the exposure of the land, from where, the, from where can it be easily conquered? So you came here not to food. You came here, as you said, you came through from the different parts of the, of the land. You came from 10 different directions. So why did you do that? So he said to him, no, my master, our servants have come to buy food. She said, don't say that. But your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. And your servants have never been spies. So that's we hear the Holy Spirit flickered within them. They included him. They said, Akulanu, we are all. He was talking to him. We are all. But he too was the son of, 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 of the father Jacob. So they said, we. So they, they included him into this into the we. Kinim, honest, truthful. Verse 12, he said to them, Loi. that's not true. But you have come to see the nakedness of the land. Lidiska. She said to them, For you have, as Ashi says, for you have entered by the way of 10 gates of the city. Why did you not enter together through one gate? That alone shows that you are spies. Verse 13, he said, no, we are 12 brothers. We're all from one man. And our youngest is with our father today. And one of them, we don't know where he is. So you ask the question, Rashi, what is he saying again? You ask the question why we went through 10 gates? The answer is because we're looking for the one that is gone. And the one who is gone, we scattered in the city to seek him. So we're looking for our brother. And that's why we came through 10 different gates. So you are spying. So now I'm truthful. You came to find your brother. You're searching your brother in, in Egypt. Why don't you go to the police? That's what I said, exactly what I just said. You came as spies. This is the thing I've spoken, Lane, that you are spies. It's true and correct. This is according to simple interpretation. Medish interprets, however, he said to them, and if you find Joseph, and they, the owner, demand a large ransom from you, will you ransom him? They said, yes. And he said to them, if they say they'll not return him with money, what will you do? Ah, so they said, for this we have come to kill or be killed. So he said to them, that's exactly what I said. You're not coming here. You're coming for trouble. You come here to slay people in the city. And here's where the major said that he had a cup, that he said it was a divine cup. And he said, I see in my cup that you guys do these kind of things. He said, I know you have some brother that did the same thing when the city did not uh, follow the direction. They distorted the whole city. So you come here. And if your brother is not going to be, if the guy is not going to want to be uh, freed, you're going to uh, go out and kill the people. So therefore, you are Meraglim, your spies. Therefore, I'm going to give you a test. In the life of battle. If you're going to survive coming out of this situation. You have to bring your younger brother here to Egypt. So now she says that Pharaoh will live. When he swore falsely, he swore by Pharaoh's life. <laughs> For self he didn't want to swear in God's name. Even though Joseph said everything in God's name, suddenly... He swears in the Pharaoh's name because he he, he wanted it. He didn't. He was afraid. Let's say the brother's not going to bring him down. So he's not going to mention God's name in vain. 
So he mentioned Pharaoh's name. If you're going to go out of this place. So send, send one of your brothers. And he'll take your, take, bring your younger brother. And you will be in prison here. I'm taking all you guys, throwing all you guys into prison. And we'll test it out if it's true. If it's not true, by the, by the life of Pharaoh, you are slave, you are spies. So that's it. If the truth is with you. But Yosef, awesome mission. So Yosef took them and he threw them all into jail for three days. Through the motor, he wanted to get, he wanted them to taste what it means to be in jail. You should have the taste of jail. But he wasn't planning to keep them in jail. On the third day, Zaisas, he said, change his mind. He said, Zaisas, this is what you should do. And you will live. For I fear God. It's amazing. You're going to see how many times Jesus is going to say, God. In, in his conversations with his brother, and they never realized that, they never didn't catch on. They were so traumatized, they didn't catch on, and he kept on saying God. And uh, no Egyptian would speak in that kind of way. But um, over here, it, 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 you'll, this ends the, the Chumash of the day. We'll continue tomorrow, this unbelievable story as it unfolds. We go now to the Tanya of the day which is the third chapter. Yesterday we did the entire second chapter of Tanya. With the Alter Rebbe introduced us to the godly soul. And it's very important, that, and that's why it's interesting that there's very, the Fidik Rebbe, the people of the Rebbe put together the Tanya. And he usually, he doesn't, very few times he puts the whole chapter in one day. Uh, like chapter 32, and chapter two is always like in one day, he puts it in one day. To, 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 to learn one, that chapter, too, as one chapter. Most of the times, the chapters are cut up as today. So uh, the Alter Rebbe introduced us to the second, second soul, important soul that we, we should have. And even though there are many levels that the Alter Rebbe ends off to the, to the what the soul ultimately comes into the physical body of every one of us, and there's no comparison to where the soul comes into Moshe Rabbeinu, or to the leaders of every generation in comparison to the regular people like us. But nevertheless, every Jewish soul source is in, is in the wisdom of God because everything is created through the wisdom of God, which, is, which in Kabbalistic terms is the Chachma, the wisdom of the world of Atzillus, the wisdom of the world of emanation. That's the highest level in creation in Kabbalistic terms. Everything comes out for Chachmei Law, which comes, which is connected to Eirein Tzai, because as the Alter Rebbe expressed, God, and based on the Maimonides, God and his wisdom is one. God and his Torah is one. God and his wisdom is one. So if God and his wisdom is one, then each and every one of us is connected to God. That was the chapter two. That's why he starts with chapter two, the nefesh Hashem is Yisrael, the second soul of the Jewish people, chelak elikam imal mamish, is a part of God, mamish truly, is truly a part of God. And think about that, contemplate that, understand that, you got the foundation of the whole time. So now he continues. In a call, bechinim regim shoshelu. Now he kept on saying. We say that the soul has five levels. The soul itself has five levels. Forget about that each soul is different. Each soul has five levels itself. And one of the three basic levels that come into a human being is nefesh, ruach, neshama. Nefesh, what we call, so we all call that soul. Nefesh is a soul. Ruach is the spirit of the soul. Neshama is also we call that soul. But that's the intellect of the soul. So it's interesting. The neshama is also soul. Ruach is a spirit, and the nefesh is soul. So what's the difference between neshama and nefesh? Neshama is the intellect, and that's the most important aspect in the soul, the wisdom of the soul. 
And then the nefesh is the way is the most also also most important concept in a, in a soul because that's the action. That's the way the soul comes into the body. Kedam hu nefesh for the blood of man is his soul. So what's in the middle? The ruach. Ruach is the emotions of the soul. Seven emotions, seven character traits. So that's the intellect is in the shama, the emotions, and the actual soul in the body, which all three are important, but the link is the middle. The link is the middle, right? So you can have great intellect and you can do great actions, but if it's not emotion, you're not emotionally correct, then the actions, the link is not going to be a good, very good link. The intellect and the action, you know, if you're not going to have good emotions, if you're not going to be mind over matter, if the intellect is not going to express or impress upon itself on the emotions, then the action is going to be far from what it should be. Okay, so that's why the, that middle area is important the ruach, the emotions, zekala adam is the emotions. Chava is love, is yira, is fear, is victory, all is exp emotional expressions. So therefore, you you therefore it's important to know who you are and what your cap capacities are, what your capabilities are, and therefore, how do we know that? How do how do we evaluate that? So that is klulo me'asibichinis. There are consist ten faculties in your soul. Can I get eses which is comprised? Of the ten svirot aliyonot, so that's again you have that in the nefesh shiruch neshama. The neshama is the is the chachma bina das, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. The ruach is your six emotions: ava, yira, ava, chesed, gevura, teferes, netza, choy, yisoid, and malchus is the nefesh. Malchus is the nefesh. When it comes into the Melech, you're a king over yourself. That's it. You're a king, or are you, uh, you know, uh, not a king over yourself? So the, the, that's the nefesh. How do you rule yourself? All is, is, is it corresponding to what's above, to the ten Svidar divine manifestation, which originate where they descend. So everything that we have within us is also above in the spiritual world. Which are divided into two parts. Shem Mois, Two categories. So look, it means three of these spheres are turned mothers, and they are the source and the root of the seven spheres. As a mother is a source of her offsprings, the seven doubles, it's called doubles, the seven divine attributes called doubles. So much that each of the emotional attributes manifests itself in twofold manner, as we will explain, as the Alter Rebbe explained. Pirush, Chachman bina das, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That is the intellect. V'shiv v'shimei abinia, and then you have the seven days of uh, 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 seven doubles. Which is the emotional attributes known as the seven days of creation. Chesed, Sunday, kindness, Givura is the is 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 the Monday, severity, Teferis, beauty, Tuesday, and so on. Netzach, the other four being Netzach, endurance, Hoid, splendor, Yesoid, foundation. And then you have Malchus, royalty. So these seven attributes are known as seven days of creation. For it's through these seven attributes that God created the world. Each day of creation came through about through a particular attribute. During the first day is Chesed, dominance. The second, the dominate, I'm sorry. And the second day is Gevura. And Tuesday is Teferas. And Wednesday is Netzach. It's today, and, to, and Thursday is Hoid, Splendor, and Yesoid, Foundation is Friday, and Shabbos is Malchus. Now that's why I said six, really called Shit Svidas, six Svidot, because Shabbos, even though it's part of the week, it's separate. Malchus is separate. 
So it's part of the week, but it's called Shabbos. It's not called Yema. It's called both Yema Shvi, but it's also called Shabbos. So this, so so that's a ten svirot. This introduce you to the ten svirot, and you could talk days on this, but we're not going to go through right now. We'll go through, after that, but we'll go through it a little bit in Tanya. And that's the way is divided in the human being. Seichel, midas, attribute of seichel, intellect, and midas, concept of emotion. A seichel, what is seichel? What is the category of intellect? Koilel, seichel has three things in it. Intellect has three things in it. Chachma, bina, das. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Chabad, that is Chabad. That's the meaning of Chabad. This is the foundation of the Alter Rebbe's teaching, Chabad. That's why this organization is called Chabad. Chabad means wisdom, knowledge, and wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. But what is the what is the concept of emotions? Is the basic two 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 emotions are Ava, love, Ava Hashem, love of God, dread and awe. Again, these are two levels in love. There's level, as the Alter Rebbe explains later, there's two, there's many levels in love. Basically, two levels, love, <coughs> have a, there's a great love, there's a, there's a worldly love. There's two levels of fear. There's a kind of fachte, fear, the lower level of fear. And there's the higher level of fear, which is yira, which is, which is oh. Well, the fara and the glorification, tiferes. The concept of glory, and so forth. So love, love corresponds to chesed, kindness, and they are respectfully the internal, emotional, and external of the particular. So you have kindness, and the way kindness is expressed is love. You know, you have gevura, which is awe, comes out through fear. So dread is the awe of God corresponding to gevura. As they are the inner aspects, so too the glorification him corresponds to Tiferes. And wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, they're called mothers. They are called mothers. This is important. They are called mothers. Even though Chachma is a father and Bina's mother, but we call everything mothers. Why? Because the whole point of wisdom, knowledge, Wisdom and understanding is to have midas, toivas, is to have good character. And if you don't have good character, then it's a, way, it's a loss of, 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 a, of a concept. It's a loss of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's why it's important that they're called mothers. Because the offspring of Chabad is love and fear. And this is a very important principle in Tanya, is mind over matter. Mind over matter. Nobody can say that he doesn't, that he can't have mind over matter. As long as you have a brain in your head, you have the capability of mind over matter. And that's a very important lesson in Tanya. That the Chachma, Bin, and Das are the concept of mothers because they need to, they in essence have children. So if you don't have Ava, if I don't have love of God or fear of God, because I don't have Chachma, Bin, and Das, I don't have mothers. I eat the Shamama. I didn't have that mother. I didn't have it in my mind. I'm not talking about the physical mother, I'm talking about the spiritual mother. I don't have strong mothers. That means I don't have strong understanding. I don't have strong knowledge. And I surely don't have strong das. So therefore, if I need to be emotionally more better, I need to understand, I need to have more knowledge. I need to surely more understanding. So Dr. Rebbe goes a little deeper. To explain this matter, that the three intellectual processes described above, inspiration, there's a different wording he's using over here in his English over here, inspiration, 
is Chachma. Cognition is Bina. And contemplation is as follows. The intellect, the intellect faculty of the rational soul, the first, at that first, conceives any matter. The faculty produces the seminal point of an idea and the first flash of illumination, that's chokhmah. That's the concept of inspiration. Chokhmah, wisdom, inspiration, potential. Nikra b'shem chokhmah. Chokhmah has many, many meanings. Over here, the Alter Rebbe says one of the meanings is koyachma. You take the word chokhmah and you divide it in half. It says, it says koyach. The first two letters is kof chof. It's koyach, means strength. Ma. What is it? Which is compound of two words, kayachma, potential. What is? Chachma means potential. An inspiration. It's not yet formulated. It's not yet, of, you, don't, you, don't, you don't even know what it is. You know there's something there. Something is there. So it's the faculty concerning which one can pose the question, Ma, what is it? I'm not sure what it is yet. For at this stage, the idea in question is not yet clear or comprehensible logically, since its details are still in potentia, emerging only at a later stage. That's Chochmah. And that's why Chochmah is always out there. That's why King Solomon said, Achakmai was given wisdom. What is it? It's far from me. Now, when you take that wisdom and you concentrate, you concentrate on it from potential into actual, now I bring it down into understanding. That's the, I, can't, I understand when, I take that thing and say, wait, wait, now we, let's understand it. Let's take that chokhmah and let's now box it. Lahovin Dovala should to understand the matter well. So let's go into explanation. That is, when he ponders on the details, which make up the totality of the particular idea, in its length and its breadth, length involves a range of the idea. One draws down a concept from a lofty level to a lower one by the way of a parable, for example, in order to make it more readily understood. He is lengthening it, giving it a greater range of accessibility, right? Because the parable is really far from the wisdom, but now the parable gives you many different ways of looking at it. That's to, to like, a, like, a, like, a, like a, like a, like a, you know, a, like uh, what do you, I'm losing the word. Uh, like you know, the, the, a rubber band. <laughs> you can pull it. You can you can lengthen it. That's the beauty of the Torah. Rechav it can be lengthened. One parable may not be suffice, and it's necessary to provide a second parable. That's a, a good a good speaker. You know, he says a story, and one story is not enough. He gives you another story. He, he, he lengthens the concept. That's the professional. And thereby lengthening the concepts and further downward. Scripture writes concerning King Solomon, he spoke 3,000 parables. So great was Solomon's wisdom that to explain one of his thoughts, he had to give 3,000 parables. One parable to explain a basic concept, a second parable to explain the first parable, and the second, third parable to explain the second parable until ultimately giving 3,000 parables, an extreme example of the length of an idea. And, and by understanding that, in essence, that the saying, when the Gemara says that, that, that Shlema Melech had to give three parables, he first of all shows you the greatness of Shlema Melech, that it can, he can explain something 3,000 ways. And number two is, it shows you the greatness of the wisdom of Shlema Melech, that most Nobody understood his wisdom. 
That's why it says Shira Shirim. The Gemara the Talmud says the sages say that Shira Shirim sounds like a, a love song. Trust me, in there is hidden the most secret things of, of Shlomo Melech. He gave us, he gave a parable that, that, that we can understand, but it's in there is most spiritual concepts. So the breadth of the idea means, so that's the length. The breadth of the idea means the multitude of detail which the concept comprises, as well as its ramifications. For example, the logic behind a lach ruling in the law of kashas may, may, may also apply to the law governing financial disputes. How do you connect one to the other? That's the, that's the, the, the breadth. So the length and the breadth, because every detail in the Torah has within it compartments and com connections and unlimited. And therefore, everything is interconnected because there's so many details in each and every concept. This is the meaning, la'ashurai, to know something fully well. Know something fully well is understanding the intellect content completely, both in its length and in its breadth. So therefore, that's Bina. Understanding is lengthening something and going deep into it. Both concepts. Lengthening it, giving parables to it, can, and then going into its depth. Into its detailed depth. Well, okay. Thus, when one conjugates on, on a concept, one thinks on a concept in its length and its breadth and delves in its very depth. It involves in the concept which is conceived in its intellect. Everything comes from Chachma. Without the Chachma, without the wisdom, you don't have anything. When one apprehends its detail, manner, the seminal point of intellect which prior to his, to his kind of, to guys who was understanding was but a nebulous point of Chachma. And that is what's called Bina. This is Bina. Chachma is potential. Bina is understanding that potential. Taking that potential and taking it, spreading it forth, going into its essence. So Bina is a faculty with a loose dates, the detail of any concept apprehended it full well and in depth. And now you understand why Chachma is the Av and Kabbalah. Chachma is the father and Bina is the mother. Why do we call this Imois? We call all the three of them mothers. Because Chachma, you don't have. Nobody has Chachma. <laughs> we all have Chachma, but nobody can grasp Chachma. It's me, in the Mishnah said, if somebody says, I have wisdom, he doesn't know what wisdom is. Chachma is potential. And as I said yesterday, that's why it's called a Talmud Chacham. You are a student of Chachma. We are all a student of Chach. Who are you is Bina, the mother. Who are you is what you understand. What you understand is who is you ultimately going to be. And everybody is, he is, or she is, is according to your understanding. Because that understanding is going to make you Hamelidas, Vehenin Avain. This is the father and the mother. Hamelidas, which give birth to Ava, to love God, Ava is Hashem, the Yirase Fachta in to fear and awe of God. So those are the children. And according to the nurturing of the mother, is going to be the children. According to the nurturing of understanding, which is the mother, that's the Ava and the Yira. You could have all the wisdom in the world, but if you don't understand it, or you understand it wrong, or you, 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 you're going to have, you're not, I'm not, I'm not going to have good Ava and Yira. The more 
the greater understanding I have, the greater my love of God and fear of God I'm going to have. Because the mother, Bina, understanding is the developer of the wisdom. Just like the father gives the, the drop and the mother through nine months, I was yesterday's Tanya, the mother through nine months creates the child. So that's why the Bina, Chachma, is Yud. The letter Yud in God's name is Chachma. The letter He is Bina. The letter Yud is but a dot. The letter He has broad depth it goes brought out, it comes down, because that is the real level of understanding. To take the drop, because everything actually that it says is brought down, that everything start, every letter starts with a dot, and it broadens out. The letter yud is but a dot, small dot. But then it comes down into the letter hey. Chachma, wisdom is but a dot. It then comes down into the concept of understanding. And the way I understand is the way I'm going to have the children, and spiritual children of Ava, love of God and fear of God. And that completes the Tanya of the day. We're still in the middle of chapter three. So we'll continue it tomorrow, chapter three. Today is the 27th day of um, Kislev. 27th day, because the third day of Hanukkah, Tillum of the day is from chapter 120 till chapter 120 and 34. 120, this is the 15 Shira Malis. 120 to chapter 134. If you'll say that to him, you would do the chitas of the day. I wish you all a beautiful day, a very happy Hanukkah. A very happy day. God should bless you all with only happiness and joy. And we should all only celebrate together for many, many happy Hanukkahs and Nitzshem. The lighting of the third, the lighting of the menorah in the third temple. Bimheda, Biyamenu, Mamish. Have a wonderful, beautiful, happy, healthy day.